Hi everyone. I guess it's popular to show the work area or workshop that you make your knives with. Um, so in this video I'm going to cover two topics. My work area and where I edit my videos, my office. So I cannot call it a workshop because I don't have a workshop. It's a, basically a little work area in my backyard, in my patio with a plastic roof over myself and that's it. Um, it's not a workshop. I wanted to make this video a long time ago but the reason I did not make it is because I rent an apartment and the fence that's in my backyard it was falling apart so they were gonna replace it and I didn't want to have people ask me questions oh did you move did you upgrade to a new workplace or workshop so now that the fence is fixed uh, I, I want to show you what my workshop or work area looks like but before I do that I'd like to start from the very beginning I get a lot of comments people saying that if they had the tools that I have uh, they would make the same knives or better um, you gotta remember this it took me four years to get all these tools uh, so just by seeing what I have it doesn't mean I had it from the very beginning use whatever tools you have laying around to start making knives don't wait until you have all the tools I have to start making knives. In the beginning of my knife making hobby, I didn't have all the tools I have right now. I used hacksaw and tin snips to cut kydex sheath to shape. I started out with a vise, a couple of files, angle grinder, a battery operated drill. As you can see in the video, 70% of the work is done on a vise. When making a second knife, I saved up money and purchased the drill press and a Milwaukee bandsaw. Later on I had Mr. Barnhart make a table for the bandsaw. I bought a 2x42 bell grinder when I was making my eighth knife. Look at how shiny and new it is. I remember how nice it was watching steel disappear under the spinning belt. Uh, no more files, no more filing jig I thought but it takes time to get good at grinding bevels so I went back to the filing jig to fine-tune my knives. I altered my belt grinder and cut out a bunch of parts away from it to make uh, it suitable for my workflow. I bought a forge when I was making my ninth knife. It made a difference in the heat treating process. No more map torches to heat up the steel. This is my old workspace. Once again, I'm working using a file and a vise. A plastic roof to protect me from the rain. And when the rain stops, I would remove the roof so I could stand up straight. When it's cold, I use a heater, but when it's hot, there's nothing I could do about it. Our temperatures go up as high as 108 degrees Fahrenheit in summer. Now that you have seen my old workspace, here's the new workspace that I've made. I had my fence replaced, therefore I had to take everything apart and wait until they finished installing the fence. After it was complete, I applied stain and began making my workbench. I used 2x3s and 2x4s to build a workbench. Now keep in mind I'm not a carpenter and never built a workbench in my life. All of you folks that are carpenters please don't judge me too harshly. I bought a 3 quarter inch plywood from Lowe's and cut it up to fit the shape I needed for my workbench. Oh yeah, I bet knife makers can't do that with their 2x72 grinders. I used a bolt as a height adjustment on the bottom of the leg. A 2x3 frame was used to structurally secure my workbench. I secured my workbench with screws that have a coating used to protect against rust and corrosion. Finally, this was the last time I had to drag my drill press out of the shed. I made a slot in a table for the neck to fit and a table on the bottom as a base support. From now on, it will be very comfortable for me to sit and drill. I installed a total of three LED lights to light up all my workstations. Next I installed the pegboard for two reasons. First one is to organize my tools on the wall and second to cover all the crevices in the fence. And here's a final somewhat finished work area. My best device, my extra large workbench that I served me previously in all of my knife making videos. Here's an overview of the tools. 
wall mount Milwaukee bandsaw with pedal switch fan to cool me down in the heat air compressor hose right below is a compressor DeWalt vacuum drill press with miscellaneous things below it and a fire extinguisher a wall cabinet that will be filled up once I take all the tools from the shed I don't know if I'll be using a belt grinder here where it's at because I don't want to put metal dust all over my workbench and here's a view of uh, some of the clamps I carry after finishing my workbench I had to check make sure everything feels comfortable at each working station once I started organizing everything you know at each workstation an idea came to my mind why not just start making knives and then while I'm working I'll see exactly where to place each tool so I stopped organizing and I stopped bringing out all my tools. Now that you have seen my work area where I make knives, I would like to show you the other part where I edit videos, edit pictures, where I store other all materials uh, used for knife making. This was my old setup. I was slowly running out of room. I stored knife blanks on the furniture. I had kydex by the side of the table. I see knife steel and unfinished Yakamando knife in the left corner. After I would finish the knife, I would place it on the top of the printer so nobody would mess with it. And that was my storage area for the knives. Finally, I had enough and I wanted a bigger table where I could sketch my knives and just for more storage space. My old computer desk went outside and became a workbench. I watched a couple of videos on YouTube where people showed their gaming setups and there was one in particular that I liked. I went to the IKEA and bought uh, two white cabinets and uh, two tabletops. I left one piece six feet long and the other one I cut to four and a half feet long. During Christmas time I bought a LG 38 inch curved monitor from a B&H photo located in New York. Now keep in mind with this big monitor all it does is make it easier for me to edit videos. Because the size of the screen now I can have multiple programs running at once. And here's a before and after. So at the top of the shelf I keep all the finished knives. I don't have to use a printer no more. This is the view of below the desk. Still not enough room but it's better than what it was. So at the top shelf I keep all my external hard drives, camera, a couple of tools here, clamps, At the third drawer, I keep all my knife material handles, rivets, uh, decorative pins, clips. And the bottom one is just miscellaneous knife sharpening wheel, glue, tape, height gauge. Right across is all where I keep all my pens. I use Sony camcorder to record all the videos I and also Sony NEX7 to take pictures also don't forget to use your um, smartphones they come in handy I store everything on an external hard drive it's a 4 terabyte I use two tripods to record my videos when I edit the videos and I want to be quiet I use the headphones I use Adobe Premiere to edit the videos and Adobe Lightroom to edit the pictures. Everything is edited on Asus laptop and uh, 38 inch LG monitor. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. I tried my best to include all the details about two of my work, work areas. The shop or the... Uh, it's not a shop. It's a work area and uh, the where I edit my pictures and videos for you guys to watch on YouTube. And I'd like to remind you that just by having all the tools I have, all the 
editing computer and monitor and every, you know it, it's not gonna make you any better you have to go out and do it on yourself you gotta go practice I mean just for example that 38 inch uh, wide angled screen did it make me a better editing person no I still edit the same way as I used to all it did was uh, make it easier on my eyes make it easier for uh, having multiple programs open on the same uh, screen so I could reference when I edit my videos. All, that's all it does. If you think you're magically gonna become an expert by buying all the fancy tools then that, that's not true. You still gotta go out and, and practice, practice, practice. If you have any questions everything I talked about will be below the video so check it out. I know I will not get a lot of views on these videos, but I make these videos for you guys, the ones that truly follow my channel, so you could have a better understanding um, what the workflow is, you know, how, how everything is done and where it's done. Also, I make these videos um, kind of for myself to document how I started and who knows where I'll end up. Uh, also, I think it will be interesting for my grandkids to watch these videos when I'm long gone. I think that is it for me, and I will see you with a different video next time. Take care, guys.